If you happen to see my YouTube video called The Rummy Cube Box, you would have heard me talk a little bit about Murphy's Law. You know, if something can go wrong at will. Now I had said that I was going to make a plaque that I could put up on my wall in my workshop that had this Murphy's Law on it. Well, that's what I'm going to do in this video. Now, as you know, a plaque that hangs on the wall, it's not usually a big, heavy, clunky thing, unless it's made of plaster Paris, but this is going to be made of wood. So we're going to try and keep it nice and light if we can. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just resawing these boards down here to make them a little thinner, and uh, it's going to incorporate two different types of wood. There's going to be uh, the aspen for the lighter wood and cedar for the darker wood. Now, as you've already noticed, these boards are only about five or six inches wide. And the plaque is going to be probably, oh, eight by ten. So I'm going to have to join these two boards together. And one of the problems is when you join two thin boards together, when you clamp them together, they have a tendency to want to buckle. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a device that will hold the boards perfectly flat so that they won't buckle when the clamps squeeze in from the sides. You know, there's another saying, and it goes something like this. You can't fit a square peg into a round hole. So, I'm going to make a square hole. I have to trim these pegs down just a little bit so that half of this device will slide on them. The pegs were originally cut to the exact same size as that square hole that I just made, and it would have been almost impossible to slide the device back and forth. What I'm doing here is I'm beveling the contact surfaces of the device where it's going to come in contact with the board. The reason being is the less area that it's in contact with the board, the less the glue gets smeared around on the board. If the two sides that are going to be joined together are perfectly square and flat, the joint will be much stronger after it's glued together. That's probably why they call this machine a jointer. Glue will not stick to this shiny plastic tape, so I'm putting the tape on the device so that I don't accidentally glue my boards to the device. I know it's kind of hard to see, but sandwiched between the two devices and being squeezed in from the sides by four clamps is the board.
So okay, that was the aspen board. Now I'm going to work on the cedar. And I'm going to try and join it together a little bit differently. What's happening here is by making these V grooves, I'm actually increasing the area that can be glued. And theoretically, it should be stronger. And as you can see, I'm joining the cedar boards pretty much the same way as I did the aspen. I know in a couple of my last YouTube videos I mentioned how great this downdraft sanding table was, so I'm not going to mention it in this video. Now this glue that you see oozing out here doesn't run the full length of the boards, it's just on the very ends. You'll see why in a minute. I have a program on my computer called CorelDRAW, and it works just great for creating stuff like this. I've printed out my drawing onto a piece of paper and now I'm just going to glue the paper onto those boards. I'm measuring my scroll saw blade here so that I can use the smallest possible bit to make the holes in the board. You'll see why here in just a minute. This drill bit is only slightly larger than the blade. I sure hope that little tiny drill press there is going to be able to handle that great big drill bit. Now there has to be a hole in each letter so that I can thread the scroll saw blade up through it and then reattach it to the scroll saw. You'll see how it goes here. I have three or four different kinds of scroll saw blades. There's the two there. The one on the left is the one that I just used. The one on the right is the finest one that I have, the narrowest. I'm going to try that and see if it'll make a narrower cut. I'm using a mirror here to see the bottom of the board as I thread the scroll saw blade up through those little holes. I find this works really good. It sure saves on the neck. Okay, you can see me fastening that little blade to the upper arm there. Well, underneath there's an almost identical arm. But I've got a dust collection system rigged up there and it completely blocks off the lower arm. And I find it a lot easier to use the upper arm anyway. So, this is the way I'm doing it. Now, I know I could feed the blade down through from the top. But then I've got to fasten the blade at the bottom. And I find it a lot easier to fasten it at the top, so that's why I do it this way. Although this little blade does have a nice narrow kerf to it, I'm finding it a lot harder to guide. It kind of reminds me of one of my bandsaw blades. It just doesn't go the way it's pointing. Okay, I'm going to try my spiral blades on this project. You know, I always feel like I'm cheating when I use these things. It's just too easy. Another thing I'm not too happy about is they have a pretty wide curve and it's really hard to cut a straight line. But we'll give it a try and see how it goes. I don't use these spiral blades very often. And every time I do, I have to retrain my thinking into the fact that I don't have to turn the board to go around a corner. 
I just have to push the board in the direction I want the cut to go. Kind of nice actually. This spiral blade is actually working out better than I thought it would. I think I'm probably going to use it for the rest of this project. Notice how to get it to go around the corner. All I have to do is just push the board into the blade the direction I want it to cut. Don't have to turn the board. This is great. If there's any experienced scroll saw enthusiast watching this video, and I doubt that there is, they would say that scroll saw has the ability to run a lot faster than that. They'd be right, it can. I bought this Excalibur scroll saw from Canadian Woodworker. They got the lowest price on it. I'm not sorry I bought it. One of the things I noticed when I unpacked it and set it up was how exceptionally smooth it was very smooth compared with the entry-level machine that I had before. It's probably the Rolls-Royce of home workshop scroll saws. I was finding with the spiral blade that I was having just too hard a time staying on the line. So I switched back to the more conventional blade, but I was finding I was having a problem staying on the line with that too. Must be me. Well, this is the last letter. It's going to be interesting to see if what I have in mind for this project actually works. That glue stick that you saw me use at the beginning of this video was water soluble so all I had to do was just wet the paper and peel it off. Remember I used a little dab of glue on the very ends of the boards to help hold them together? Well now I'm cutting those ends off where the glue is and hopefully the boards will separate. Well I guess by now you've got it figured out. The dark cutouts from the cedar go in the aspen and the light cutouts from the aspen go in the cedar. I was hoping that the varnish that I'm putting on here was going to soak in around the letters and sort of glue them in place so that they wouldn't fall out. My first coat of varnish is dry now, but the letters, most of them anyway, are just as loose as they were before. All the varnish did was just make everything look nicer. So I was wondering, now how am I going to glue these letters in place? Well, I had a nice little supply of 5-minute epoxy from the dollar store on hand, so just watch. Well, that worked just great. Now I'll just do the other one the same way. 
There aren't too many places on the walls in my workshop where I have room to hang these plaques up, except one wall behind my lathe. And it's probably just as well because of all the machines that I use in my workshop, I probably have the most problem with this one. And for the other plaque, I found a spot next to my model ship case. A few years back, I had built a couple of large plastic model ships, and wouldn't you know it, one of them was the Titanic. Oh, the irony of it. If anything can go wrong, it will. <laughs>